Good morning, everybody. Hope you're great. Hope you're fine. In today's live video, always a book club video. Our book today is called entitled Intuitive Parenting How to Tune Into Your Innate Wisdom by Jennifer Day. That's a lady over there. So, goes into parenting. For some of us, are not there yet, but you know. Or one day might be there, but for those who are there, well then, something I could learn about parenting. This is a great book, it's really amazing. So parents today are inundated with information and expert advice, often contradictory and invariably overwhelming. This results in anxiety, insecurity, and stressed parenting that can drive wedges between parents and children instead of fostering this book offers swift, practical, and to-the-point information to help you reconnect with your innate wisdom, giving you the confidence to trust your own parenting intuition. So in this book, you will discover the key and underused ingredients to your own parenting blueprint, learn what gets in the way of connecting to your intuition and how to eliminate it, learn the three levels of influence you have on your child and how to align them. Discover the one simple tool to managing your stress. So easy, your child can do it too. Learn how to give unspoken support and how to practice true listening. This practical everyday applications this book provides will reduce your anxiety and help you to connect and be fully present with the child, improving relationships for you both. So let us dive in and see. So these are the contents of the book. Of introduction, why we have lost touch with our parenting intuition and how we can regain it, the difference between intuition and instinct. Chapter one, what every parent should know, in brackets but doesn't. So we know about the brain, so the plasticity, how it changes, the brain's red system, the thinking brain, how we hardware children's brains. Chapter two, there but not there. The parent's greatest fear, but the loss of the village is detrimental to children how social media affects children's emotional growth, parents' IT use and how it impacts children's emotional needs, the challenges of overparenting, how to overcome the factors that undermine the parent-child connection. And here we have your three levels of influence. How important is parents' influence? The three levels of parental influence, the significance of what we say to children, how, how what we do and demonstrate impacts our children, how parents' emotions influence children, entertainment, what it is and why it is key to parental influence, how children pick up parental authenticity, how to be congruent, become entrained. For your personal parenting blueprint, a tool to help resist Parenting, peer pressure, the power of core values, core values and the adolescent brain, identifying core values, creating a family core values chart. Five, expectations, those that help and those that behinder. Expectations to be, expectations and the brain's threat system, your child's threat system, your child is one of a kind. Expectations to do and perform, a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. Minding your praise, the brain's integration process, meeting your children where they are six tuning in the ultimate intuitive parenting tool to recognize emotional awareness a thousand boys emotionally different emotions of physical emotional stress release emotional management 101 releasing stress producing emotions reframe emotional mastery and parent intuition the three hours of tuning in chapter seven empowering your child could you be over parenting? So this over parenting, building self reliance, over scheduling the safety factor and risky play. Chapter eight, giving unspoken support. How to listen, fully tuned in. The breakdown of listening skills, fully listening. The parental knee jerk that prevents full listening. Agenda free listening. How to do it. Unseen and unspoken support. Learning goal. Chapter nine, staying tuned in during stress. Conflict and adolescence. 
So when we want to talk about uh, debunking a myth about pranking, adolescents working out how and when to say names. Conflict, anyone? Hello, we have your image of your child or adolescent. Your stress and conflict, parenting in stress, default behaviors. Chapter 10, intuitive parenting, listening to yourself, being, doing, and having. In conclusion, what gets in the way? Stress. There, one of their expectations of a parenting. Intuition index, keys to intuitive parenting. Three levels of influence, core values, blueprint. The three hours of managing emotion and accessing intuition, accepting what is listening to and empowering your child. Appendix, find the feeling, word list, bibliography, acknowledgements, and the index. So we shall look a little bit about the uh, introduction. That's what it says. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Attributed to Frederick Douglass in the 1850s. Why we have lost touch with our parenting intuition, how we can regain it. In this time of numerous parenting experts offering vastly different, differing views on every imaginable aspect of child rearing. The consequence among busy, overworked, and often overextended parents is self conscious, Google driven, fretful to the point of being calculated parenting. Children experience their parents over anxious, preoccupied, concern, and themselves develop anxiety and an insecure sense of self. Parenting intuition, both as a concept and an innate ability, has for the past few decades become undermined, if not usurped by the thousands of parenting books, blogs, and so-called parenting experts flooding the market. But raising a child, in quotes by the book, or according to the directives of a shedload of experts, in brackets including me, is like trying to live a healthy life by following every diet trend, paleo, Atkins, microbiotic, and raw food diets, to name just a few, in brackets, have all intermittently been hailed as the greatest diet ever, and then, after a while, the limitations become apparent. Intention may be good, but ultimately making any significant changes, significant choices in in our lives by following trends and can have inadvertent and unhappy loving, caring parents who are sincerely committed to doing the best for their children and self-consciously and often anxiously trying to follow advice that is regularly contradictory and frequently also encourages them to be alert for symptoms of a pathology or disorder. Diagnosis has, of course, helped countless children and families handle great challenges and traumas, increasing numbers of psychologists, psychologists and mental health professionals, however, by becoming concerned about the other diagnosis of too many children as well as the mounting angst in parents contributing to other anxiety in their children and the disturbing rise in mental health problems among ever young children. So we have all of it. That's the book itself, some of the productions, you know, some of the great. So you have the difference between intuition and instinct. So uh, I'll give you. So we see instinct here, she says, is the biologically hard wired survival mechanism. It is designed to help us use, help us sense danger or warning signs of threat and is often connected to a flight or flight, fight or flight response because we are not equipped to be consciously alert to all dangers, risks, or hazards. Our instinct works with all our physical senses and our subconscious to signal to us when we need to be in our guard or extra vigilant. Our conscious mind can only take in and process fewer than 200 stimuli simultaneously, where our subconscious, greatly assisted by our limbic system and its own experience, can process many millions per second. And herein lies our instinctive capacity. Intuition, on the other hand, here, signals us through what is deeply important to us, through feelings of unconditional love, balanced care, and human flow, and optimism, alignment with our values and our desired direction of growth. It does not pretend to function in stress, but rather when we are completely present and in the now. Intuition can be described as our North Star, but doesn't necessarily show us why a 
particular direction is the right one. We just know it feels right. So that is the introduction. So we see chapter one talking about what every parent should know, doesn't know. The unexperienced experienced chips, the structure or functions of the brain. This reveals the fundamental way in which gene expression is determined by experience. Daniel J. Siegel, The Developing Mind, April 1st, 1999. This talks about the brain and how it works, which is very interesting, which we should all know to be honest. System, the thinking brain, how we hardware children's brains. But the two, they were not their children contend with parents who are physically close, tantalizing so, but mentally elsewhere, share a tackle along together. While you expect more from technology and less from each other. As the parents square the sphere, compose and read the pipe. Why the loss of the villages pretty much the children? Let me read this chapter for you. I find it interesting. Aside from the children diagnosed with clinical mental health condition or serious learning difficulties, who of course require medical treatment, I have seen enough evidence in my parent coaching practice as well as in conversations with colleagues and therapists that convince me there's something else going on. The disturbing numbers we see include many healthy children who are developing anxiety, attention difficulties, and emotional challenges while on the way to becoming pathologies that are, in my mind, completely meaningless. Among family therapists, social workers, and other professionals interacting with these issues on a daily basis, there is a growing consensus that a new kind of intense and precarious emotional fragility exists among young people that hasn't been evident before. They are differing opinions as to the root cause, but evidence seems to suggest that three factors are involved. The first one being a collapse of the village, it takes to raise a child. Yeah, yeah guys, it takes a village to raise a child that was born in African culture. In most developing countries, you see, the concept of the village raise a child is very civilized, is very highly intelligent. You see, guys, I wanted to point that out. We are taught that all. Different cultures, plenty of cultures around the world. Those in developing countries are, are not a backward, but look at this. The, quantum, the f number one factor is that village it takes with a child is affecting the children everywhere because that is essential for life, essential for a child. So, what the people in the village know, people living in the jungle, people living in the primitive areas know are way ahead in terms of this. So, you see, so don't listen to what the media tells you about who is civilized and who is ahead. The problem shows in the in the people in the, in the children. See, they are different appearance, but the root cause, the first factor of the three factors is the village it takes the collapse of the village it takes to raise a child. So never ever follow the crowd. Follow what is right. This is what people are doing. You see, the collapse of the village now is creating a lot of look at that. A lot of problems with a child. People emotionally helping challenges. See, you cannot defy what is right. When it goes wrong, you find your consequences. So this has nothing to do with parents or not getting or caring enough. In fact, quite opposite. But I'll get back to that shortly. It has to do with a series of events and factors which include the weakening of a social context that is used to sustain and reinforce family and parental support system needed for healthy emotional development. These included extended family members in relative close vicinity, tightly knit communities where everyone knew the neighborhood children and community support organizations such as churches and community centers all these provided the necessary tribe of adults for them to turn to and all have been declining over recent years so your tribe is important guys your tribe your tribe is important right now people are leaving their tribes behind because of wanting to join the western system or to join public society you know your tribe is very very important more century better than others but There are three factors that are involved. The first one being a collapse of the village it takes to raise a child. So because of the collapse of the village it takes to raise a child, many children now have 
emotional fragility existing to our young people. You look at them now, wherever they are, there is no one, there's no village, no tribe for them to look up to, especially in, in, the, in the cities where parents are working hard and the communities are broken down. So this is where we need to go back to, to build the tribes, build the communities so that the children can have a stronger foundation, a stronger mind to grow up with, you know. So I wanted to point that out. No. So this is how social media affects children's emotional growth. Parents are 18. Challenges of overparenting. How to overcome the factors that undermine the parent child connection. Yes, then. Chapter 3. I'm talking about this one. The three levels of influence. How important is a parent's influence on that? So the quote here says, there is no parent more vulnerable to overparenting than an unhappy parent. One of the most important things we can do for our children is to present them with a version of adult life that is appealing and worth striving for. Madeline Divine, Raising Successful Children, New York Times, 4th of August, 2012. Parents are the most important people in a child's life. This is not news. We are all aware of a significant role parents or primary caregivers play. So I'm talking about the three levels of influence. In a sense, we influence our children on three levels. With what we say, with what we do and model or demonstrate, and with what we feel. No. Is it's because of what we say to children. Is it a good example which we all want for some of us to use? But try this rid of following list of negative words, remarks, and suggest positive alternatives. Watch out or you fall and hurt yourself. Hold tight and you'll be safe. Notice how these steps are wet and slippery. Why are you being difficult? I can see you're not feeling happy. Let's talk about it. Tell me what's going on for you. What are you doing? Are you stupid? Maybe that's not such a good idea. Let's explore how you can do that differently. You'll never get that right. You're just too clumsy. I know you can get it right if you keep trying. Let me know if you need any help. Now you try to come up with your own alternatives for the family. You're driving me crazy. At the moment, your attitude is not helping at all, you know. But could you please change what you're doing so I can focus, you know. You're so lazy, you'll never get anywhere. You need to work a bit harder so you can be great in your life, you know, so you can go somewhere great, you can achieve a better of your life. That's going to end in tears. Be careful what you're doing. I don't want you to get hurt. This is good, it's gonna help you, but it may not be good for you at the moment. What's wrong with you? Why can't you behave? Are you okay? Something not telling me. Did something hurt you? Please let us talk and see how I can help you. you know? So there are some there, she's put up like, are you driving me crazy? I'm having a hard time with your behavior. Let's stop and take a few breaths and start again. You're so lazy, you're not getting anywhere. I'm confident you can do better. What would help you try a bit harder? That's going to end in tears. Those are not, those are for playing with, not fighting. Put it back in the toy box, please. What's wrong with you? Why can't you behave? Looks like you have something, some big feelings going on. Let's go outside and you can tell me about it. So these are exercises you want to develop. Even in yourself, not only children, but to talk, start using positive talk to get in there, you know. So there's a lot more on the for the whole book. There's a lot more you can see in the book. Releasing emotional strength, all that. It's a great book, so think it, look it out and check it out, yeah. Talking about your mindset, your child is one of a kind, your child's first system expectation to be expectations of the brain's threat system so this is a page on factors that affect us common triggers and the corresponding value that may be valued by them so trigger the focus with the corruption and duality that's integrity so want to align yourself with this value on the side being integrity be just be fair, be loyal, have humor, be passionate, be generous, appreciate, be kind, respect, be kind, be compassionate, be benevolent, have benevolence, be loving, be caring, be honest, be independent, and be free. So those are values you need to align yourself with once you become 
part of you you overcome these on the side because these values beat, will beat this if you see yourself if you're one of those look to the right and that's what you need to develop so if you're living nice to see it be honest if you're spiteful have compassion if you're greedy be generous if you're unfaithful be loyal you know if you're oppressing think of fairness and justice you know so there's a whole lot in there it's a great book which i've gone through so i hope you enjoyed it that is the book Jennifer Day, Intuitive Parenting, How to Tune Into Your Inner Wisdom. Hope you loved it because I did. Take care and goodbye.